Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What I want to do is go through our Beer's Law lab, the uh, calculations, uh, and how do we figure out the concentration of our unknown. So real quick introduction about Beer's Law. Beer's Law describes the, the relationship between concentration and absorbance. And something that's very important to note is that, uh, that the relationship is linear to a certain degree. Once you get to um, once you get past uh, an absorbance of one, the relationship becomes nonlinear. So whenever we're doing a Beer's Law lab, you always want to make sure that your samples never get a, a beyond an absorbance of one. Otherwise, we won't we wouldn't be able to establish a linear relationship between absorbance and concentration. The first step that you do. Uh, when you're using your lab quest in the spectra of is, is establish the wavelength of maximum absorbance. So typically what you do is you take your most concentrated sample, you put it in your lab quest, and you uh, run the absorbance. And we can see that on this graph that it's a little bit uh, less than 0.9, so it's within the uh, um, our, our threshold of, of being in the linear range, so it's below 1, so that's great. Um, we uh, collect that data, we press stop on our lab quest, and then we, on the graph, we try to pick the highest point there. And what that does is that establishes a wavelength. And so in the bottom right-hand corner, the wavelength that we've established is about 507.8 nanometers. Next, what we do is create a calibration curve. So what we do is we prepare several uh, standard solutions where we know the um, concentration and we find out the um, we find out the absorbance uh, of each at each con uh, concentration. Um, I have to confess I used uh, Roxana, Emma, and Lauren's uh, solutions here, and uh, they were awesome. Um, and so uh, I collected all of the absorbance. I inputted the um, uh, the concentration so that the, so we could form our graph. Uh, and then what we did is uh, had the lab quest uh, do a line of best fit. So, uh, so our line of best fit looks like this, and it gives us our slope, it gives us our y-intercept, and gives us our correlation value, which really just tells us um, how close our data points are to the line. If our correlation is really close to one, like ours is, uh, we know that we are very precise um, with our measurements. Uh, the next thing we did is that we took uh, our unknown uh, solution. So we didn't know the concentration of this sample. Uh, and we went back to sort of our original screen and, um, and just had the spectrophotometer read the absorbance. So we came up with 0.116. So we know the absorbance at that same wavelength, but we don't know the concentration of it. So then what you would do is go back to your graph and we would interpolate. So on our graph, we'd go under the Analyze function, and then we can see the Interpolate box, and we would just click that. What that allows you to do is uh, it allows you to, um, on your line, get to the absorbance value, um, or as close as we can to the absorbance value that we read. Um, and so I kind of moved the, 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 the uh, it's not a cursor, but I kind of moved down my data point there to the absorbance that uh, was closest. So remember, I was 0 0.116, 0 0.1141 was as close as I could get. And that told me that, according to the graph, that my molarity was around 0 0.023 molar of my sample. So what's really slick is that you can um, use the lab quest to be able to find out that data, and that's called interpolating. This is just a zoomed-in picture so you can see it a little bit better. We can also find out the concentration of our unknown using our slope information um, and, our, and the slope formula that we were given before. So we know our slope formula is y equals mx plus b, and we were given uh, the slope and the y-intercept uh, before, and actually still says it on our screen there. And so what we would then do is um, uh, we'd want to recognize, you know, Besides like M and B, the slope and the y-intercept, what are y and x? So on the y-axis, we have absorbance. And so that's what we're going to plug in to ours. So our unknown was 0.116 for our absorbance. And remember, like what does x mean? Well, on the x-axis is molarity. So that's why, so that's actually what we're going to solve for. So even though we interpolated it, 
we're going to act as if we didn't know that and we are going to be able to compare the interpolation to our calculation. So we're going to go back to our slope formula and, and plug in our information. So uh, we've got our slope uh, 5.239, we've got our y-intercept, um, and remember the point 0.116 that I have is the absorbance of our unknown. So uh, rearranging the equation and solving for x, we come up with uh, 0.0233 molar, and if we compare that to what we came up with um, in the interpolation, they're spot on. Pretty cool, huh? So that's how you approach uh, uh, Beer's Law, how you can interpolate your, uh, your uh, graph, uh, and then also how you can use the slope formula to determine uh, the concentration of uh, your unknown. Thanks for watching, everybody.